And everybody said, yeah. Father, we thank you for a Saturday workers' training. Thank you for your people, our leaders, workers, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your word. We're asking, Lord, tonight, you speak to every heart once again in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be partakers of the great provision you have made for everyone in the church that we will experience in a new measure, in a new dimension, the power, the indwelling, the infilling of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Empower us for greater service in your kingdom. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. And I'm looking at verse 8. The very words of Jesus Christ to his own disciples. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ had been following him now for about three and a half years. And these disciples have learned a lot. They have seen a lot. They have heard a lot. And they had received the great commission that they will go forth and go out and preach the gospel, the whole gospel, the full gospel, the entire gospel, the mighty, powerful gospel to the whole of the world. The Lord had challenged them and he had reminded them that there will be difficulties, that there will be opposition, there will be persecution, but in the midst of it all, the commission had been given to them that they will publicize, proclaim, and preach the saving gospel to the whole world, starting in Jerusalem, where he had been crucified, and then they will go forth to all Judea. And they will get to Samaria. And then go beyond those borders and territories. And get to the uttermost part of the earth. But then he said they should wait. They shouldn't go yet. You would have thought he would tell them, move on immediately. Rush out immediately. Get the job started so you can finish in time. But he said, wait in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, wait. Don't go yet. Tarry ye in Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. That's exactly what we read again in Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Very important, very significant, that they will not rush out without this endowment of power from heaven, without the feeling and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. But wait for the promise of the Father, which says, Ye, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized towards water dipping them inside water until they were totally covered and surrounded with the water of baptism for a refreshing 
for the new world. And they have to understand they were coming to a new experience. And so he said, as John baptized in water, ye shall be baptized, immersed, surrounded, dipped, embedded inside the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Come back to verse 8. But he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I thought he had given them power and authority to go and heal the sick and to deliver the oppressed. What kind of power is it that he was telling them to wait for that they had not received already? We need to understand today that the disciples were weak and they could not fulfill their calling without this important power, this essential power, this indispensable power and influence of the Holy Ghost. Look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26, I'm reading from verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. That he told them before his betrayal, before his crucifixion, they were willing to serve the Lord. They were willing to preach the gospel. They were willing to proclaim Christ as the Savior, the only Savior of the world. But he said they were weak. Look at John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. For fear of the Jews. These were the people to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. These were the people to take the gospel out and reach the whole world with power, with authority, with assurance, and with confidence. But they were inside closed doors for fear of the Jews. Then came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So you understand why he was telling them they couldn't go out in that fearful, timid, cowardly disposition. They must receive power so that boldness will come. Authority will come to them. And it is that kind of power that will launch them on and launch them forward for the gospel. The Holy Ghost makes the weak strong. It'll make you strong. It'll make you bold. The Holy Ghost makes the weak bold and courageous, uncompromising, visionary, fearless, and faithful to the one who has called him. Hebrews 11. Reading from verse 32, Hebrews 11, I'm reading from verse 32. It says, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through face subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. It tells us about these soldiers and met worthies. 
Old Testament servants of God. And he said, out of weakness, they were made strong. And the Lord is applying the same thing to his disciples. Applying that to every one of us today. Out of weakness, to be made strong. Then he goes on to say, they were valiant in fight. And they turned to flight the armies of the aliens. You see the names I mentioned there? Gideon, weak, but empowered by the Spirit. Jephthah, weak, but strengthened by the Spirit. Samson, David, Samuel, and the prophets, they did what they did by the power and enablement of the Spirit. That same Spirit will empower you from today. Judges chapter 6, I read from verse 13. Judges chapter 6, verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of? saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him, Gideon, and said, Go, in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of of the Midianites, have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Why am I reading that? He was weak in himself. He was weak when he thought about the commission and the great work the Lord committed into his son, he said, how can I? I'm small, in a, in a poor family, he was weak. Look at verse 34. Verse 34, and the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew a trumpet, and Abiezer was gathered after him. Weak was strengthened by the Spirit. Look at Judges chapter 11. Judges 11, verse 29. In Judges 11, verse 29, we see the next person mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. Judges 11, verse 29. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and he passed over Mizpeh of Gilead, and from Mizpeh of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. They got the victory by the coming of the Spirit of God upon them. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. I'm reading from Judges chapter 14. Judges 14. I'm reading from verse 5. Then went something down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him, tore him to pieces, as he would have rent a kid. You see that? By the Spirit of the Lord. So, all the people that did exploits, all the people that did great things in the Old Testament, and then in the New Testament, they did by the power, in feeling, in dwelling and endearment of the Holy Ghost. We're told in chapter 15, verse 14, Judges 
chapter 15, verse 14. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. You see that? The Philistines thought they got him. They were going to bite him. They were going to destroy him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became as flax that was burnt with fire. And the bands loose from off his hands. Hebrews 11 mentioned David. Look at 1 Samuel. Chapter 16, verse 13. Chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and poured and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Look at this. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. They were weak in themselves, but their power, their authority came from the anointing of the Spirit. Micah chapter 3, reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And then he says, Now I can declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now it tells all that these prophets and all those great men and women that God used in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant, they were saved, they were forgiven, they became righteous. Not only that, after that initial righteousness that came through forgiveness, they were holy, holy in heart, holy in their mind, holy in their spirit, holy in their soul. It says, holy men of God, and then the Spirit came upon them, forgiven, set free, holy, and with power in their own dispensation. That's how they did what they did. That's how you will do what you will do. You're still to do something greater than you have ever done. I said you are still to do something greater than you have ever done. But the Lord told his own disciples, you must wait for the endowment of power. Tonight I'm looking at the message, a ready provision for the weak to do exploits. A ready provision for the weak to do exploits. Come back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And ye, the ye there, the disciples, the ye there, the followers of Christ, they were weak only after the endowment of power, endowment of the Holy Ghost, will they become strong. And ye, that's point number one, their evident weakness before the endowment. Their evident weakness before the endowment. Point number two, 
shall receive power. That's a point number two. Shall receive power. The expected wonder of divine endowment. The expected wonder of divine endowment. Point number three. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. You'll do something you've never done. In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost part of the earth. You'll be witnesses unto me. Point number three, the empowered witnesses doing exploits. The empowered witnesses doing exploits. I'm coming back to point number one. Their evident weakness before the endowment. Look at chapter 1 verse 8. But ye, talking to his own disciples, they were saved, but they were weak. They were sure that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God and is the Christ. They were sure of that, but they were weak. They were selected. They were chosen. Out of the many people that followed Christ, these ones were selected. But they were weak. Not only that, they were sincere. In giving all the promises they gave to the Lord, will follow you. Even to the point of death, they were sincere. But they were weak. They were sanctified. The Lord had prayed for their sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctified, but were weak. They were surrendered unto the Lord. Soul, spirit, and body. Fully surrendered, but were weak. They were serving already. He had sent them forth two by two. To preach, to heal, to cast out devils, to cleanse lepers, even to raise the dead. They were serving, but they were weak. It was in view of that weakness they had, in spite of everything they had got. That's why he said, he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then, after that, power has come. That weakness will be taken away, and there will be witnesses unto him. Look at the scriptures. They were saved, but weak. Look at John chapter 17. Reading from verse 14. The evidence that they were saved. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world has sated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They're just like me. They are not of the world. They were saved. Verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They were separated from evil, and now the Lord was praying for them to be free, permanently free from the evil. They were saved. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They were obviously saved. But they were weak, all the same. Chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 12. Chapter 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You're so weak. I have to think about what I tell you. You cannot take in everything. You're weak in your receptivity. Yet they were saved, but weak. Number two, they were sure. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 69. 
John chapter 6, verse 69. But we believe and assure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who do you say that I am? You are the Son of the living God. You are the Christ. You are the Savior. We are sure of that. But see how weak they were in spite of that assurance. John 20 verse 19. John 20 verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, their fearfulness shows they were weak. Number three, they were chosen, selected from among the followers of Christ. John chapter 15, selected, chosen. John chapter 15, verse 9. If he were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. I've chosen you. I've selected you. What a great privilege they had. But you know, they were weak. Matthew chapter 26. I read from verse 56, Matthew 26, 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. They didn't just sneak away from Christ. They fled. They ran. They were afraid. One of them, Judas Iscariot, had come. And he had betrayed Christ. And he said, this is the man. I kiss him. You take him. And when Judas came like that, they couldn't even confront Judas, who had been with them for three years. When they saw what was happening, Although they had been chosen, they had been selected, yet they ran, they fled. That's why he said, in your present stage, in your present status, you are weak. Tarry in Jerusalem. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. You will be endued with power from on high. Saved, but weak. Sure, but weak. Selected, but weak. Sincere, but weak. Sincere. Look at this, Matthew chapter 26, verse 35. Matthew 26, verse 35. Then Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Look at this. Likewise also said all the disciples, not only Peter, and he was sincere, Jesus, you are our Savior, you are our Lord. Come what me. Let what will happen, happen. Count on us. If it's necessary to die, we'll die with you. All of them said the same thing. They were sincere but weak. Look at verse 56. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples, without exception, forsook him and fled. In this same chapter, they have promised him, we'll die with you. We'll go with you. 
But when the real challenge came, they took to their heels. They were surrendered unto him. They left all. But they were weak all the same. Luke chapter 18. In Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 28. Luke 18, verse 28. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. As for surrender, entire surrender, complete surrender, absolute surrender. We have left all and we have followed thee. Verse 34. In verse 34, and they understood none of those things. And the saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. They were weak in their understanding. Albeit, although they surrendered all. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 32. Mark 9, verse 32. But they understood not that saying, and they were afraid to ask him. That's weakness. Following Christ for more than three years, and Christ said something that they didn't understand, yet they were so weak in their mind, in their heart. And they knew Christ was loving. And yet, they couldn't bring themselves to ask any question about what they didn't understand at this time. They were weak. Saved, yet they were weak. Sure, yet they were weak. Selected and chosen, yet they were weak. Sincere, yet they were weak. Sanctified were they, yet they were weak. John chapter 17, sanctified but weak. In John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Chapter 16, verse 6. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Sanctified, but weak. They were serving already. They had gone two by two. And they preached the word of God. Although they were serving, yet they were weak. Look, chapter 17. I read from verse 7. Luke chapter 17. Verse 7. But which of you have been a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to meet, and will not rather say unto him, Make ready where we is, I may serve, and gird thyself, and serve me, till I have eaten and drunk him, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Does he thank the servant, because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not, I throw not. So likewise ye, disciples, when ye have done all those things which were commanded you, say, we are profitable servants, we have done that 
which was our duty to do. They were dutiful. They were serving. Yet they were weak. Mark chapter 14, verse 37. Mark 14, verse 37. And he comes and findeth them sleeping. And says unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The Spirit truly is ready. All the promises we are making, the Spirit truly is ready. All the consecration and the vow you made, the Spirit truly is ready. And the utterance to make proclamation, I'll go with you anywhere, everywhere. I'll die with you. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And so you understand what the Lord is telling us. There's a work to do that can only be done in the strength and the might of the Holy Ghost. And even though we're saved, even though we're sure, of our ticket to heaven, even though we're certain that He has chosen and selected us, even though we're sincere in our services, in our prayer, in everything we do, even though we're sanctified, even though we're fully surrendered unto the Lord, laying everything on the altar, and we're serving the best we know how, yet we're weak to do everything He has called us to do. That's why it says in Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 8, Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 8, But ye shall receive power. That was in the future tense. A few days it will happen, but yet in the future. A few weeks it will happen, yet in the future. Ye shall receive, receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, point number two, the expected wonder of divine endowment. The expected wonder of divine endowment. There was remarkable difference in the lives and the ministries of these disciples after the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You'll notice as you look at the Acts of the Apostles, the fear that was there before, everything went away. The timidity of not being able to confront sinners, the Jews, all that went away. And the reservation of not being able to call sinners to repentance and pointing at them, you crucified the Lord, all that went away. And then the fear of the Jews, and the fear of religious people and the fear of the Satan's captives not being able to rescue them and bring them out of their self-imposed occultic uh, uh, imprisonment, all that went away. Now they were sure. Now they had the power. Even though Christ was not there physically with them, they could go out and do the work he had appointed a sign for them to do. But he shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the expected wonder of divine endowment. We're looking at Micah chapter 3, verse 8. Micah chapter 3. Verse 8, but truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Truly, I feel it, I know it, I possess it. Truly, certainly, every step I take tells me I have something I didn't have before. Truly, certainly, assuredly, the things I face the Jews I face, the Israelites I face, truly, I am full. I am full. There is no part of my being. There is no part of my heart that is still being indwelt by the spirit of fear 
I am full of the spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob when I stand before the people of Israel, Jacob, I'm not looking for what to say. I don't forget what I ought to say. Fear does not shut my mouth. Truly, certainly, as I look at what happens inside me, I'm stirred up. I'm enthusiastic about it. I'm filled up with the judgment of God upon the people and of might, of strength, to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin filled full of the power of the Spirit. That's what the Lord is going to do for you. He's going to accomplish it. You'll be so full. You open your mouth like this, strength will come out. Power will come out. Authority will come out. Amen. Look at Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sin shall be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. When this power comes, you'll not just be preaching bread and butter. He will answer your prayer. He will give you fruit in your farm. He will give you this and that. He'll butter your bread. He'll put sugar in your tea. You'll be saying what the people want to hear. No, what they don't want to hear. That sin drags people to hell. The smallest of sins, the greatest of sins. All sinners, young and old, if there's no repentance, they're going to go to hell. And I'm talking to you tonight. You'll tell them that God is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You'll not be looking at your paper. You'll not be looking at the Bible. You read it from the Bible and then you look at them so they know that you are talking to them because you're full of the Spirit of the Lord to declare unto the nation their sin and their iniquity. Verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Upon who? Upon who? But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Until ye be endued with timidity, with weakness, with what? With power from on high. Power from on high. You know, there are people that have power from beneath. Those are those occultic people. They have power from the ocean. Those are those mermaid worshippers. Their power from the forest, from down below. But the power from above will crush the power from beneath. Ye shall receive power, and then you have that power from on high. And you'll be able to declare the sin of the people unto them. That power is coming. If you have got it before, you'll get more multiplied power great power power from on high let's look at acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made that same jesus whom ye have crucified both lord and king here peter this peter talking you're going to talk like this a week before this time. But the power has come. I said the power has come. Now it says you are the ones that crucified Christ. Verse 37. Now when they had this, they were preached in their heart. They were convicted in their hearts. They were condemned in their hearts. 
they felt guilty in their hearts. And he said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's power. To convict those hardened sinners, that's power. To convict the people that said, Let his blood be upon us and our children, power has come. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself, rescue yourself, separate yourself from this untoward generation. That's boldness. That's authority. And he had the boldness and the authority. You will have it. Then it says in verse 41, Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day, there were added unto them, tell me. There were added unto them, tell me aloud. About 3,000 souls. In one day, Peter the apostle did what he could not do in three and a half years. You are going to do it. When you bring together everything you've done since you were born again, all the souls who led to the Lord since we were born again, all the people that were healed since we were born again, all the people that were comforted and confirmed since we were born again, when this new power comes, in one day, in one week, in one month, you will do what you have not done in years. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Those people that came to the Lord when Peter preached unto them, did they backslide? I'm asking you, did they backslide? We have evangelized, we have reached them, we led them to prayer. They received the Lord. They said they repented. They have come, born again. And now we are following up. I pray that the experience here will be our experience. Verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. My time has come. Your time has come. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 7. And when they set them in the midst, that they, that's the Sanhedrin, high priest, Caiaphas, Alexander, and the priest at Jerusalem, they gathered together. In the past, even their sight will make Peter shake. And in shaking, he'll forget what he had planned to say. But now, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power and by what name have you done this? Then, tell me his name. Tell me his name. Now put your name. Amen. Amen. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, it's not a once and for all feeling. He was filled before. In chapter 4, filled again. In the presence of these terrorizing religious leaders, filled again. And it says, when Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost, he said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man 
by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom ye crucified, look at that, Peter could never have spoken like that before. The Holy Ghost came, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Even by him does this man stand here before you whole. And this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the hedge of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. Caiaphas, priests, high priests, leaders of religion. There's no salvation in the Jewish religion. There's no salvation in the name of Moses. There is no salvation in Abraham or David. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we, the Jews, must be saved. Now, when they saw, what did they see? Now, when they saw, what did they see? What will people see in your life? Fear, runaway spirit, Jonah's spirit. What will they see in you? When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. Your boldness will make them marvel. Your courage will make them marvel. And your stand will make them tremble in Jesus' name. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Look at that. They didn't say, were baptized in chapter 2. And when those uh, priests asked us the question, were filled again. So that's enough. No, they prayed again in such a way that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with boldness. Verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And great grace will be upon you all. You can tell there was a remarkable difference after their lives, their hearts, their personalities were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Before the baptism, they had power to heal. But such power without courage will not convert the world. Power to heal, but they were fearful and they were staying inside closed doors. The power you feel, the power you carry, while you lock the door against yourself for fear, that power cannot heal anybody, cannot cast out any devil, cannot preach the gospel. The power you have to heal when you're timid before the Jews and before the persecutors, and you're thinking, I don't know what they'll do against me. I want to save my life and protect myself. That kind of power you have that cannot brave it and come out, that power can do nothing. But now, power had come. And that power now could make them to go out boldly and face the sinners. The Holy Ghost endued them, endowed them with power. And it brought, number one, power to confront sinners. 
power to confront sinners. They were not talking to sinners this way and looking the opposite direction. They were not talking to sinners in front of them and looking on the ground. And they were not talking to sinners and wishing and wondering when the time will be over and they will sink away into uh, their corners or into their homes. They had the power to confront sinners. They pointed to them and said, you are the ones that crucified the Lord. Number two, they had power to call sinners to repentance. They said, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent ye. The power to call sinners to repentance. And that calling to repentance actually took root in the hearts of those people. The sage will do what you have seen. And then they gave themselves to the Lord. Number three, power to preach courageously despite persecution. They arrested them, put them in prison. They came out of the prison. And he declared that same word they preached before the power to preach courageously despite persecution. Number four, power to convict Satan's captives. Power to convict Satan's captives. Chapter 13 of Acts. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a brilliant man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, was to them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, Filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me shout, filled with the Holy Ghost. Say that again. It will come upon you. Say that again. Then Saul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O fool of all subtlety and mischief. Wait a minute. This side, this section was not in his notes. This section was not in any handwritten paper that was going to deliver. You see, there are people, they glued their eyes on the paper. They are afraid to look at the people. If they looked at the people, and the people made some signs or signals, they become afraid and they forget what they wanted to say. But you see this man, Saul, who also he called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, and what he did have in the note, mighty sentence, mighty proclamation. He said it, it was fulfilled immediately. This power will come upon you. Verse 10, and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, Thou child of the devil. That's confrontational. That's direct. Thou child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, today, right now. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt be blind. Ah, Paul, what if you say it and doesn't happen? No, I'm sure it will happen. What you say, I said, I'm sure it will happen. The decree you make, I said, I'm sure it will happen. You know why people don't pray for the sick? They bring the sick to them. And um, they talk to them. They quote the promises of God. And they say this and say that. 
and then the same, you know, it's difficult to see the pastor, but I'll, I'll try. I'll make you see the pastor. The man came to see you, didn't come to see the pastor. You are the pastor there, and power will flow out from you in Jesus' name. But you know the fear is, what if I pray and nothing happens, but something will happen? This is a new day, and the power of the Holy Ghost is upon your life. What if I pray and it doesn't get well, he will get well. What if I pray and the decree is not fulfilled, the decree will be fulfilled. The doctor has already said, the man is gone. Not just going, the man is gone. What if I say I'm praying now and the man still goes away from the earth? Don't say that. The time has come. The Lord will fulfill the prayer of your mouth. Look at verse 10. Again, it says, O full of all subtlety and of all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind and not see the sun for a season. And tell me, where are you? And immediately there fell on him, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It fell upon him and in darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, believing, and astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. You will bring conviction upon Satan captives in Jesus' name. You will have power to continue by persecutors, you'll be unbroken. You'll be unshaken. Unbroken by persecutors, unshaken by persecutors, you will continue. Power to penetrate gentle nations where Christ had never been named. The people that have never read the Bible, the people that had never heard the name of Jesus Christ, Paul and some of these apostles went to them and they opened their eyes to see and they believed and they knew Jesus to be Savior and Lord. It will happen through us, me included. I said myself included. We are going to start in a new way, with new power, with new courage. With new anointing, with new breakthrough in Jesus' name. And then he gave them power to cover and conquer the land. Power to cover and conquer the land. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come see there also. They covered the land, they conquered the land, your time has come. Come back to Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 8, point number 3 now, the empowered witnesses doing exploits. Empowered witnesses doing exploits. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And ye that were saved but weak shall receive power. They add this wonder of divine endowment. Eventually, shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. 
as we read the Acts of the Apostles, mighty miracles took place in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 3. Mighty miracles took place in all Judea. We are coming to chapter 9. Mighty miracles took place in Samaria. Acts chapter 8. Mighty miracles took place in the uttermost part of the earth. Acts chapter 14, Acts chapter 28. Everything here in verse 8 was fulfilled in those disciples and apostles. What if you read? What if you were to read? What if you read Acts chapter 1 verse 8 every day for the next one week? Just wake up and read it and say, Lord, this is mine. Lord, this is mine. Say that now. And ye shall receive power. He's talking about me. And ye shall receive power. He's talking about me. And ye shall receive power. He's talking about me. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, the Holy Ghost afresh shall come upon me. Power afresh shall come upon me. Say it for yourself. I will be his witness in Jerusalem, in my community, outside my community, in Samaria, among those who do not know the Lord, and to the uttermost part of the earth, even among strangers, power will come upon you. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto Christ in Jerusalem, in your Judea, in your Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. You are a preacher. I said you are a preacher. He will anoint you for the preaching, empower you for the preaching, and all that you need to do, you will do in this generation. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but I'm not among them whose love will wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end. I'm going to endure to the end. I'll be preaching till the end. I'll be ministering to the end. My people are not sure. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. I pray God will make you a partaker of this in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 3. Reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 15. In verse 15, here's the word. It says, And ye killed the prince of life talking to the Jews, talking to those terrible sinners, to those criminals, you killed the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. Look at verse 26. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. That's why Christ died. That's why Christ made a sacrifice to turn you away from all your iniquity. What was the result of that preaching in chapter 3? Come to chapter 4 verse 4. How be it many of them which had the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. 
They were always counting their converts in thousands and thousands and thousands. Our time now has come to always count our converts in thousands and thousands and thousands in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe I said it will happen. You believe I said it will happen. Acts chapter 4, reading from verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. They said the same thing that happened before we killed him. Even greater things are happening now. People are being converted now. And they are listening to you and you are teaching them the doctrine of Christ. Now don't talk in this name anymore. Verse 19, I thank God for the change in Peter. I thank God for the change in John. I'm thanking God for the change in you. I'm thanking God for the transformation in you. That now you can talk like you have never talked. You can preach like you have never preached. You can manifest boldness and authority like you have never done. You can rest assured in the power of the Holy Ghost like you have never done. Let's come to verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. But we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You tell us to stop, we will continue. They tell you to stop, you will continue. They tell you to shut up, you will open your mouth. They tell you not to preach again, you begin afresh, you'll be preaching in Jesus' name. Verse 33, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem. What's your doctrine? We will knock at every door. We will preach to everyone. We will fill every city of this nation with the word of God, with the word of salvation in Jesus' name. Behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Look up here. Peter, James, John, Matthew, and the rest of those the 12 apostles and some others, Philip, Stephen, were preaching the word. And they were pointing at the people. You killed the Lord. You did the evil. But you know, the rest of the church, they were not so fearful. And they were covering their mouth with their hands, saying, here are the apostles. Here are the preachers. Here are our leaders. See how they are talking. And see how they are accusing and pointing to the people. What if these people jump on us? You see, today, there's so much fear in the church. I don't mean this church alone. I mean generally that people cannot stand up on the corner of the street and talk to the people. They say, be careful what you say. At a time like this, it's not going to read too many verses of the Bible. Wait. Let things cool down. You see the things that are happening. Or oh, don't you know? Are you not here? Are you not living here? And you are opening wide your mouth. And you are reading every verse of the Bible. 
and you don't skip that verse, skip that verse, skip that verse. Because if you read everything there is to read, you don't know who is there. You don't know who is there. And they might be looking at you. You are the target. They will, they will get you. And they are not only afraid, they want Peter to be afraid. They want John to be afraid. Any spirit of fear, every spirit of fear, I cast out from everyone in Jesus' name. Where we'll go. Where we'll preach. We'll announce the gospel. We we'll lift up Jesus Christ. If the people of the world are protecting their messengers, God in heaven will protect his messenger. Look at verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to be God rather than men. Somebody shout amen. amen. The great commission will be fulfilled. The word of God will be preached. Souls will come into the kingdom. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to be God rather than men. The God of our fathers, rest of Jesus, whom tell me tell me out aloud whom you slew and hanged on a tree that's exactly what they told them not to say you are bringing the blood of this man upon us and they said whom you slew and hanged on the tree him as God exalted by his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. We are his witnesses. You'll be a witness. And so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. Exploits or do exploits. You will do exploits. New power will come upon you. New strength will come upon you. The anointing of the Holy Ghost will multiply in your life. Exploits in preaching and teaching. Exploits in witnessing and waking up those who are asleep. Exploits in saving souls and healing the sick. Exploits in casting out devils and overcoming strongholds. Every stronghold in your community, we're going to pull down. Exploits in reaching and running after souls and enduring with courage and bringing souls into the kingdom. I am of that number. I said I am of that number. I said I am of that number. You'll be of the number in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 11, reading from verse 32. Daniel 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. But the people that do know their God. Anybody knowing God here tonight? The people that do know they are God, the God that cannot fail, the God of all power, the covenant-keeping God. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Shall be strong and do exploits. Shall be strong and do exploits. Every kind of weakness that might remain in you, you shake it off today. I said you shake it off today. Any kind of timidity that might be in your life, you shake it off today, you will be strong. My brother, you will be strong. My sister there, you will be strong. You will do exploits. I will do exploits. We shall do exploits together. All the weakness be gone. 
all the weaknesses go away. Awake, wake up. Awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on the beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. Henceforth, there shall no more come into thee an uncircumcised or the unclean. Every plant the heavenly Father has not planted in your soul, in your heart, in your mind, in your brain, in your family, in your ministry, in your household, every plant will be your protege. Verse 2 of that's Isaiah 52, verse 2, shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bunch of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Enough of retardation, enough of powerlessness, enough of fear, enough of timidity. Shake off everything that God has not brought into your life and arise and go and do wonders in your locality, in your community. In your local government, anywhere you are coming from, go and manifest the power that does exploits. Go and do it in Jesus' name. Rise up now. Rise up now. Awake. Rise up now. Rise up. Everybody, awake. 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 It's the day of power. Awake. Put on thy strength. As for the Holy Ghost, as for the baptism, as for the endearment, O Zion, put on the beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. The unclean will not come to you again. The uncircumcised will not come to you again. Shake off yourself from the doors and then go and do exploits. You are loose from every sin that binds you in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer today. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer today. Power, power, power. Power has come. Authority has come. Divine enablement has come. Open your mouth, open your mouth. God cannot fail. His power cannot fail. Jesus promised that you receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And this is that day. And this is that time that the Holy Ghost is about to come upon your life. Holy Spirit is coming. Power is coming. Anointing is coming. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, shake yourself from the dust. Everything that has weighed you down, everything that has pulled you back, everything that has retarded you, everything that's telling you you cannot do it, you cannot do it, you are weak, everything that is telling you you cannot make it, this is the time to tell the Lord, oh Lord, I want this new anointing, I want this new power. It's coming upon your life right now. It's coming upon your life right now. And you shall receive power. Are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? Yet you are weak. You're sure that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and yet you are weak. You're sanctified, and yet you are weak. You're submissive to the Lord, and yet you are weak. He has selected and chosen you, and yet you are weak. Tell the Lord, all this weakness I don't want. I want all the weaknesses to vanish away. And he tells you already, shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. Shake yourself from the dust. And say, Lord, come. Come in. You are baptized in the Holy Ghost before. New anointing is coming. You are empowered before new anointing is coming. Energized before new anointing is coming. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. Look at the weakness in your life. Look at the timidity in your life. And you tell the Lord... All this weakness and all this timidity, everything must vanish away. Everything must vanish away. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Let him come. Power from on high. Let him come. Authority, let him come. 
Enablement, let him come. Empowerment, let him come. Endearment, let him come. Endowment, let it come. You've been hearing it for a long time. Lay everything upon the altar. And you tell the Lord, today will be my day. Today must be my day. Today must be my day. The Lord will do it. 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 But you must pray. But you must tarry. But you must wait. Until you are endued with power from on high. You need him. The light you need. The wisdom you need. The anointing you need. The power you need. Let him come. Those apostles were filled and filled and filled and filled again. This is not the time to go out anywhere. This is the time to have the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. 